fantastic. And she's going to talk to us about what she's been up to and actually do a little bit of a cooking demo. So all the way from Australia, welcome, Anya. Yay. Well, you're saying afternoon, but here it's actually 8.30 in the morning where I am. So I'm on the Gold Coast in Australia and yeah, it's 8.30 in the morning. So the recipe I'm going to be sharing today is actually at breakfast, <laughs> but you can eat it at any time of the day. And actually, before I came on here, I realized the last time I cooked for you or on your channel, I made something with mushrooms. And then today I'm including mushroom as well, but it's not something I cook with every day. That's quite all right. We're so happy to see you in your kitchen. You look beautiful and your kitchen looks beautiful. Thank you. You're beautiful too. So I'm so honored to be on here. I love you. I love you so much. You're oh, well, so I, I just great. found out today you're a fellow Aries. So I could, so congratulations, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I had my birthday last weekend and it was very low key just at home. I had a Zoom session with my parents and my son. So yeah, all the distancing happening, unfortunately. So, um, but yes, it was, yeah, fellow Aries. Well, you know, everybody assumes that all vegans know each other, but I always just assume that all Australians know each other, but you don't live anywhere near the other vegan uh, Australian spud fit, do you? No, spud fit is... All the way at the bottom of Australia, I'm towards the top, but we do know each other. We have met each other. We liaise via email occasionally and run into each other every now and then at vegan festivals, etc. But yes, we're a long, long way apart. And is Sandy Pluis, is she in Australia too? Oh, I'm not sure. She's, she's a vegan. Like, she, she's, she's from uh, Vegans Eat Yummy Food. She's the one that invented the potato waffle. Ah, okay. I'll have I'll, to check it out. I'll see if I can find out. So I see you have an air fryer there. I do have an air fryer, and that's what I'm going to be using for a recipe today that I want to share. And yeah, I'll just get my bits and pieces here. So yeah, this is the air fryer that I use. So it's just a small Philips air fryer. Um, and I know you have a you have a really big air fryer that I've seen you use. Yes, I have the Breville, but I do have one that size called the Go Wise that looks just like yours. Go Wise, yeah. I just, I love using this. It's compact. It's, it heats up so quickly. I don't even preheat it. And I just love using it. And I have three of them in the house. So when my son comes to visit, he'll use one. If, um, oh, I know some friends of mine, they're meat eaters. And one of the girls is plant based, one of the husband is a meat eater. So, they have one each and the husband actually cooks his meat in his air fryer so it keeps everything contained and separate and then everything else that they're cooking is shared so that's a handy tip for people that do have meat eaters in the house just give them a separate air fryer they can cook their own meat in there and it's all contained it's not splattering everywhere and yeah I say just give them a separate house no. <laughs> yes <laughs> even better so yeah I just like to use this one but yes I would like to check out the bigger one that you have but I don't really have enough space here so but I guess I've got a traditional oven so I just make do with that but I do like it because it, it's just easy to use and you can just pop out the insert and I've seen some some bigger ones where the whole tray pulls out but then you have to lift this out but then you need a plate for underneath and I don't know, it just seems messy. Whereas I like this, you can just carry, if it has some liquid that's come out of something, you can just carry it anywhere in the kitchen. So I love it. All right, so let me just pop that aside. Nadez says, happy belated birthday, Anya. And we have a comment from Rosemary. She's a newbie. I don't know if that means you're a newbie to watching me or veganism, but either way, welcome. And they both, at Mary likes both of our shirts. Mine says Chef Alicious. What does yours say? Mine says mm, yum because that it's just my default when I'm in happy land and I'm eating some delicious food. I just always go mm, yum. Mm. Right, <laughs> and I'm on autopilot when that happens. I just I love food and I think you do too, AJ. So I, <laughs> I saw you. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been plant based? Since 2012. So. Back in 2012, I, oh, I came, I'm German from my background and I lived there till I was eight, came to Australia with my family, but had a lifetime of bad eating. 
So up until the age of 39, I was eating meat, cheese, dairy, bread, anything processed, whatever I could get my hands on, I would eat those things. And I was constantly yo-yo dieting and struggling with my weight. And so back in 2012, I went to Germany for three months to visit my family. And being the loving family they were, <laughs> they just loaded me up with food, lots of junk food while I was there. They would bake cakes and they don't just bake one cake. It, it seems like they just make everyone's favorite cake and it's a big family. So <laughs> we would have 10 cakes at a time and they'd go and buy fresh bread rolls in the morning and then you'd have your ham and whatever with it and cheeses and that type of thing. So it was three months of pure gluttony and I got back to Australia and I just I didn't feel right I just had really low energy I had headaches and I don't know I just wasn't feeling right so I took myself off to the doctor and he ended up um he was listening to my my chest and he said oh I hear a heart murmur and I thought oh what what's a heart murmur I, I'd never even heard of it and he said, look, I just, I think I need to send you off to get an ultrasound done on your heart. And at the time I was 39, I had a, a 10 year old son and I thought, oh no, heart issues. And I panicked because my mum's mum had actually died at the age of 52. So that's, that's quite young to die from heart issues. And then on my father's side as well, he had, my grandfather had had three or four bypass operations and then eventually he actually died from heart disease as well and I know well I know now it's the number one killer in the world so it was really scary so age 39 a 10 year old son and and then the doctor was telling me oh you need to have an ultrasound done on your heart and I thought oh okay this is scary I don't want to go down the same path as my grandparents so I went off, I uh, had the ultrasound done, came back to the doctor's office and he just sort of looked at me and he said, oh, you've got the start of a bulging aorta. I said, what's that? And he said, well, if it keeps bulging, eventually it just puts so much pressure, it's like a balloon and it'll explode and you can just instantly die. I thought, oh, okay. So I said, well, what can I do? And he said, well, how about you go and see a specialist, go to a cardiologist and see what they recommend. So I went to the cardiologist and he wasn't very helpful at all. He said, oh, you're so young. Oh, don't worry about it. And I said, well, do I need to take medication or do something? And he said, oh, look, I can put you on tablets for the rest of your life, but if if you don't want to, it's really not going to make any difference. You're too young, blah, blah, blah. And he pretty much sent me, sent me back home. And I thought, well, what sort of attitude is that? He gave me no help at all, just saying, you're too young, don't worry about it. So I started researching. I got on the internet. Luckily, the internet was around. And started researching, researching, and came across the China study and Forks Over Knives and Dr. Esselstyn. And I thought, oh, okay, plant-based diet. This seems to be what can help me. It can actually reverse heart disease, not just stop it. And it seems like people are actually getting results from this. So pretty much overnight, I think for about a week, I still ate salmon, but pretty much overnight, I went 100% whole food plant-based. And initially I was still incorporating some oils, but from where I was coming from, that really rich, heavy diet, it made a huge, huge difference. And probably within about three or four weeks, I just suddenly had all of this energy. And within four months, I'd lost over 50 pounds, which is about 24 kilos. And it just dropped off. I wasn't even focusing on the weight. I was focusing on getting my heart healthy. And then I had all this energy and I felt amazing. I lost weight. And then... <laughs> I remember even my cleaning lady, I had a cleaning lady that came in at the time and she would rummage through my pantry going, oh, what's this? And, and what's this ingredient? And she was so excited to see all these things because she could see the effect it was having on me and the change in me. And so she became curious and, oh, what do you eat now? And what, what, what? And my family, they were all saying, well, what do you eat? Do you just eat grass? 
no, you know how much I love food. Why would I be eating grass? So um, I started my YouTube channel, Cooking with Plants, initially just for my family and friends so I could share a few quick recipes and show them what I was having. And then all of a sudden, all these other people started watching as well. It's like, oh, wow, like other people are interested in this as well. And I thought, oh, maybe I can help them as well by sharing what I'm eating and sharing my story. If it just helps one other person, then I'm happy. Because when you know how amazing you feel when you eat this way, you just, uh, you want to give it to other people. You want them to experience the, the energy that you have and how how light it feels. You don't sit there after a Christmas lunch going, oh, I'm in a food coma, I need to sleep. You feel energized. You just, it's like, an, like a normal day. If you have an event, it's a normal day. You're just energized, you eat good food and you feel great. So, yeah. Well, we have Patty here who says, we started in 2012 and watched Anya to get ideas on making cheese and quotes. Thank you both for the great cooking ideas. And a lot of people relate to your story. I had no idea, by the way, that you were ever overweight, but Zena says, such a familiar story. So many of us can relate to. Heart condition hit me at 38, 39 as well, whole food plant-based to the rescue. And Susan, who is watching from the True North Health Center said, I had the same thing, a heart murmur when I arrived at True North Health Center last June for my six weeks Day, had an EKG, lost a bunch of weight, and now it doesn't bother her anymore. So she had a same family history. So that's great. I, I really didn't know that part of your story. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, well, it, it's so important to share. Like I said, heart disease is the number one killer in the world. And I know I've had it in my family and it's, it's everywhere. Everyone knows someone that's had heart issues or has died from a heart attack. And if we can get this information out there and get people eating whole tasty delicious food then why not we need to share this message so that's why things like coming on your show here my youtube channel your youtube channel all of this information getting out there is so important and yeah if people could just see how amazing they feel and and realize that heart disease is food based primarily food based you might have the odd person that has a genetic issue but it's primarily food based so people are creating these issues within their own bodies. So just treat your body well and it'll look after you. Henry says, at first I thought that was you, Chef AJ, with long hair and younger. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Maybe we're long lost twins. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, dear. All right. So yeah, today I just want to show a quick breakfast and it's not a set recipe. I like to just cook with whatever I have in the fridge and in the pantry and throw things together. So that's what I thought I would do for you today. And like I said, I'm going to be using my air fryer to make a, a whole breakfast and not just potatoes. I think a lot of people think that you just use potatoes in an air fryer and that is not the case. <laughs> it does so much more than just potatoes. Okay, so. Like I said, I'm using the smaller Philips air fryer and it actually comes with a little non-stick baking tin that you can put inside, but I don't use it very often. I just don't know what, what the coating is actually made of. So I am actually going to use just this little glass container, which fits in here perfectly. And if you can find, actually I'll, I'll show you, yeah, it's so funny. The two ladies that commented on heart disease are both Aries. And now we got Josh Lajani in the house, who's also an Aries. Happy birthday, Josh. I don't know your exact birthday, but I think it's this week. What are the chances? That's fantastic. Um, you know, do you know who Josh Lajani is? No, I just, I'm in my little bubble. I don't that's okay. He's, he's Josh Lajani. Uh, he used to weigh like 400 pounds and then he became this runner and awesome vegan and he's from the he's from New Orleans and he's just amazing wow he's, you'd love him hey I can't believe you're German you don't sound German he's, you were right like you were born and raised in Germany I came to Australia when I was eight so I think they say if you come to a country before you're 11 then you don't have the accent so I yeah I don't have the German accent do you and speak German by any chance 
Yeah, I do. I haven't in a long while, but yeah, when I do and when I go over there, it's actually in a region where there's they have a dialect. So uh, even most Germans wouldn't understand or be able to speak the dialect, but because I grew up there, I know it. So people think it's hilarious that I come over there and I speak this dialect, but I live in Australia. So it's now, when you speak the, your German dialect, is it coming out with this Australian accent? Could you just say a couple words? Because I find that fascinating. Um, I think. Uh, my cousins say when I say the letter L, it sounds strange, but um, that's the only time they can hear it. So, um, good Morgen hat sich willkommen. Cool. You know, my book was just trans my book was just translated into German in hardcover. Oh wow! Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So you're one of the few people that could actually probably read it. Read it. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so with this recipe, yeah, what I like to do is actually just cook my breakfast straight in the bowl that I'm going to be eating out of. So it's hot, delicious and ready to serve and you don't need all these different containers. So I have an oven proof, proof dish. I won't use it today because it's too hard to show the layering of what I'm going to be doing. But you can just put this straight in and you can see it just fits inside this section and it's flat so you can just put in whatever you're cooking and then take it out and it's ready to eat you can just eat straight from that bowl and you're not making a mess with other things so I love using that little trick all right but for today I'm going to use this little glass container and I'm going to do some layered tomato and beans or tomato depending on where you are in the world I'll just so you could use baked beans if you have your favorite baked bean recipe you could do that but i don't have any on hand so i'm just going to use whatever is in the pantry and i think that's really important at the moment a lot of people are cooking meals from their pantry so just try to improvise and get creative and have a play with what's in your pantry what herbs and spices you have all that type of thing and just get creative and have fun i think a lot of people overthink the cooking process and get a bit intimidated by it but just explore and play and if something goes wrong start again it doesn't matter okay so i've got some diced italian tomatoes so no added salt they're organic and i've just filled the bottom of this with some of that this and that sounds like a song um okay so I've also got some cannellini beans and I know you don't eat beans, AJ, but you could use, I don't know, do you eat peas? I can't, right now I can't eat any legumes, but I just interviewed Dr. Will B and he seems to think that there's hope for me one day that I can start yeah. to reintroduce them. Wow. Hey, how is it in Australia with the, are you guys, um, like, can you find toilet paper? <laughs> um, every now and then, <laughs> but yes, people have gone crazy here too, so. Um, but yeah, I haven't had any issues. I've not been able to get it every time I've needed it. The main thing that we're missing out on at the moment is flour, but I don't really use white flour anyway. And I just, if I need some flour, I make my own from some um, oats, if I have oats in the cupboard, or if I've got lentils or dried chickpeas, I just make flour out of that, grind it up and make your own flour. So. Um, even quinoa and rice, you can just grind it up and then you've got quinoa flour, rice flour. Um, yeah, how I roll too. Yep. <laughs> okay, so I've just mixed those cannellini beans in there and there's no quantity, just put in whatever you feel like having. And scrub these. I've got a big bench here. <laughs> so, one of the things, I've got a meal prep course that I teach, and one of the things is I like to separate my herbs and spices into containers. And this is my Italian container. So I have everything related to that in here. And I can just pull it out of the pantry, have it next to me when I'm cooking. And then I tend to use more of those things. So it makes it much easier to incorporate herbs and spices. And I just love using herbs and spices because it's a great way to add flavor and nutrition as well. So, um, even iron, I know paprika, like a tablespoon of paprika has um, 1.5 milligrams of iron. So that's quite a high amount. And things like cumin, I'm going to use some of this cumin. 
um, it has for a tablespoon 4.2 milligrams of iron. So for ladies that have menopause, you probably need around eight milligrams a day. So that's already more than half just by adding a tablespoon. And obviously you're not gonna add a tablespoon of this to this mixture, but throughout the day, adding those herbs and spices, you're gonna boost your nutrition. So it's a very, very good tip. Gina wants to know if you grind your flowers out of chickpeas and lentils just using a high powered blender. Yeah, a blender or um, if you've got a coffee bean grinder, that works really well too. So um, I've just got some Italian mixed herbs that I'm putting in. And again, just getting all those different things in there as to your nutrition. Paprika, I love paprika. If you've got smoked paprika, you can put some of that in. And what else am I going to put? I'll put a little bit of this garlic powder. So essentially I'm just making my own baked beans just by making this mix. And this is going to be the base. Okay. And I've run out of, I actually had this amazing um, smoked pepper that I actually meant, uh, got recently and it's really tasty, but I've run out. So I'll put that in today. Then I've got some chilies. I love using chilies and things like lemon, different types of pepper, the white pepper and the black pepper because it engages different parts of your palate. So if you're not using salt or oil, then it's really amazing to use pepper, both white and black because yeah, different parts of your palate are then engaged. And chili, chili is amazing. If you can handle the spice, handle the heat, um, yeah, if you can handle the heat, you can stay in the kitchen, I guess. Um, all right. So you probably have never tasted this because you can't get them in Australia, but have you ever had those flavored balsamic vinegars, the, the reduced ones, or you don't get them in your country? No, I've been watching you use them and I've been Googling and trying to find them and yeah, I just can't find anything. Um, I feel so bad because we have the owners of California Balsamic on and she's mentioning and it sounds really good that her apricot balsamic is very good in baked beans. I wish I could get you some. I, I, wish, it, I wish it was easier to get the products because I know you can't get Benson's Table Tasty either. No, oh, yeah, I think I get some things online and buy them from the US, but I, I don't know. I don't know if the vinegars ship to Australia. I don't think so. Being in well, Glasgow, they might. But I'm imagining shipping is probably kind of expensive. Do you ever have you ever been to the United States, or do you ever get here? No, I haven't. Not yet. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, this was meant to be my year of travel, but obviously no one's traveling at the moment. So yeah, I'm not traveling at the moment. <laughs> okay. So what I've got is a portobello, or some people call it portobella mushroom and I've just pulled the core out of that and if you wanted to you could just pop that in the air fryer for maybe five minutes just to soften it even more but I don't mind I just put this straight into this mixture and then sit it on top push it in a little bit so that mushroom is going to cook in that liquid as it's in the air fryer and then I'm actually going to fill this with I'm going to make a tofu scramble and put it on top so we're going to have tofu scramble, mushroom and baked beans in one hit just from the air fryer. So it's just really quick and easy to make. Okay, so. And if you don't eat tofu, you could use mashed potato. That would be really delicious as well. There's so many options. But yes, I love the air fryer. It's just quick and easy and set and forget. Quite often I'll just make a tofu scramble in the air fryer as well and just let it sit there. And then I'll go and have my shower and by the time I come back down, it's cooked. I haven't had to stand over a pan and cook it and it's easy. Okay, are you so- able, Are you able, or do you have a pressure cooker? Are you able to get those in Australia? I used to have one and it broke. <laughs> I don't think it's as good as the Instant Pot, the one I had. Um, but yes, while it was working, it was really amazing. Um, but sometimes I'm just not patient enough for it to wait for it to heat up. I don't know. Maybe that's the air is in me. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, I'd like to have it quick and easy. 
Okay, so that I've just crumbled some tofu. You can use um, you can use firm or soft tofu, either one. Or like I said, if you could use mashed potato if you don't eat beans, or you could mash up some of the cannellini beans as well if you wanted to use those and mash them up and then use that for your scramble base. And then some nutritional yeast flakes, just adding those to the tofu. And garlic, a little bit of garlic. I don't have onion powder. I don't really want to use the onion granules in this. It might be just a little bit too strong. And sage, I love to use sage. There's something magic about sage and nutritional yeast. When you use those two and make a broth, it resembles traditional chicken broth. Just that combination, it just does something magic. Great combination. And again, a little bit of cumin and paprika. Yep, gotta have paprika. It's my favorite spice oh, smoke, paprika. <laughs> and then I'll probably add a little bit of the white pepper again too. So I'd love to hear what everyone's favorite air fryer recipe is or breakfast recipe. If anyone has ventured Type it in the chat and I'll read it, read your comments to Anya and uh, let us know what your favorite recipe is for and make something other than fries. Well, <laughs> I know, they, do make the, they do make the best fries though. They really do. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> if you have any questions for Anya, and if you want to check out her website, Cooking with Plants, I pro provided a link. She has a really special gift for those of you watching. If you go to cookingwithplants.com slash Chef AJ, she recorded an oil-free class. It's a class that she charged for, and she's going to give it to all you guys for free just for watching. Isn't that nice of her? She's so generous. That's an Aries for you. <laughs> so tell us about what your books are, though. I mean, I, I have one of them, and uh, but you probably have more since then. I have four books. Um, so I've got them in front of me, but I'll just finish filling this and then I'll, I can show you. Um, but yeah. Sharon loves your balls. I didn't know you had balls. Oh, Sharon. <laughs> Maybe she means cheese ball, I hope. Um, I think it's walnut ball. A walnut ball. I it's the, I've done walnut, I've done lentils, I've done a few different ones. So, um, okay. So what I've done is just top the mushroom and filled it with the with the tofu, I presume you can see that there. But like I said, mashed potato would be awesome as well. Mix the mashed potato with some herbs and spices and then it's the same type of concept. So I'm just going to get this going and turn it on for about 15 minutes. I need to plug it in behind me because otherwise it's going to be too noisy. And then I'm going to make a cheesy pumpkin dressing slash sauce that will go over the top of this as well. Well, that sounds delicious. We love sauces. Sauces are so important. <laughs> they are. Delwyn from Melbourne says that she, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if that's a boy or girl's name, but they love baked apples in the air fryer. Sharon likes green beans with no salt, mustard, garlic, chili, and curry powder. Air fry 25 minutes for th at 375. That sounds delicious. Hey, oh. there's Stephen Turner and Judy Lemko. Thank you for being here. Yeah, um, Zena says, that is so sweet of you. Thank you, Anya, for such a nice gift. You're welcome. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's important to share how to cook oil-free and get the oil out of your diets. And that's what the masterclass was all about. It was the, a two-hour oil-free masterclass. It shows the ingredients that you can use. It shows different cooking techniques and the equipment that you can use as well. So it goes into a lot of detail. And then there's a an ebook that you can download as well. It has extra links at the back um, at the end of it to people like Dr. Esselstyn and um, Dr. Greger and some of the research that's out there. So um, yeah, I, I put a lot of work into it, but I really think it's important to share the information. So um, in terms of cookbooks, <laughs> this is the original one, Vegan Made Easy. <laughs> I think that's the one that you have, AJ. I do, yeah, it's a good one. And then I have vegan vegan friends cookbook. So this this is not oil free, but mostly I just basically I got together with eighteen other people 
it came about because I, I went for a walk around the park with my son and I said, we we're talking about business ideas and I was trying to instill um, the entrepreneur in him, I guess. And um, I said, you know, I could create a book and get maybe 18 or oh, I said there could be 20 of us and we could all do some different dishes and then you put it in a book and then you could publish it and there's a product. So you don't have to do everything yourself liaise with other people in your community which I guess we're doing now too I said get help from other people and then you can create businesses and ideas and that's how this came about it was just me proving to him that what we were just talking about on our little walk could actually be turned into a product and he could see it from start to finish and it's like wow we talked about that in the park and now it's an actual book so he was pretty excited about that so that was the concept behind that um, and then I have the um, Cooking with Plants cookbook, again, oil-free. I don't use sugar. Some of the recipes use a little bit of salt, but I don't use salt anymore. The only thing I really use is the occasional drop of tamari or I use miso paste in some dishes as well, but I've cut out the salt. So you've inspired me to do that, AJ. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, and, I, and I, I don't think everybody has to, you know, go salt-free. I just work with a certain population of people for whom it, it really does help. And, yeah. and I'm not perfect either. I have a few products that have salt in them. So I'm, I'm not the salt police, so don't worry. About <laughs> you know. Well, I, I also came across research that shows that it's not good for heart, for your heart issues as well so I thought I really want to minimize uh -huh. Salt That's salad. great. Well, see, I love when there are chefs like you that will cook salt free because then for the people that want delicious recipes, you'll be able to create them now. Yeah. And again, I think the important thing is just engaging the other parts of your palate, like the um, using the chili and lemon and um, the different types of pepper, the white and the black pepper. It just gives that whole mouth feel so you feel satisfied. Um, the last, my latest cookbook is actually this one which is the 15 minute meals cookbook. And it's just all meals that you can make in under 15 minutes. So some, are, it's in sections. I think some are oven based, some are in the pan. And then there's a slow cooker section as well. Um, so even things like uh, tofu barbecue hamburgers with lemon garlic, that is done in the slow cooker. So, yeah, so just a bit of creative thinking. I'd just like to share some creative out of the box ideas and recipes just to give people ideas. And then you can improvise. If, if you don't like mushroom, like what I'm using now, then use a sweet potato, baked sweet potato and put that in, hollow it out and fill it with whatever you like. It's just that concept and getting creative with the ingredients that you like to use. Okay, that, I'm looks, going actually, that looks great. We can can people get your books on your website, Cooking with Plants? Um, yes. So all of my products ooh, uh, ooh, on um, cookingwithplants.com forward slash shop. And it has all of my courses, all of my books there. Very nice. Yeah. Tracy wants to know uh, which Phillips air fryer do you have? What size? Uh, uh, she's definitely thinking of getting one. It's one o'clock in the morning where she's watching from in Norway. That's so cool that you're staying up so late to watch. I'm not sure what actual size it is. I know it's one of the smaller ones. I'm not sure if it's a four liter size. I don't know, but it's about the size of a blender, but a little bit wider. So it's one of the smaller ones, but I think I do have a link to it in the ebook that is on the part of the oil-free masterclass. I've got the equipment that I use and I think it's in there. If not, email me. You can send me an email and I'll, I'll measure it later. <laughs> I'm guessing it's, they're usually like 5.2 quarts. That's what it looked like to me was it the 5.2 quart one. I don't think it's the three quart one. It looks a little bit bigger than that. A bit bigger, yeah. Can, can you get like a whole pound of Brussels sprouts in there? Cause if it is, it's probably the 5.8 quart, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd be able to do that. Yeah, because uh, uh, who said that they love Brussels sprouts in the air fryer? Mary said that. And Zena wanted to know if, it, it, were you a chef before you changed your diet? I'm not even a chef. I'm not, <laughs> I'm a home cook that just likes tasty food and I like to play in the kitchen. 
and maybe that that's a good thing maybe that's why I can just think outside the box because I'm not stuck with these rules that I was taught in chef school I don't know um I just I just play around I like to cook things quickly easily and have it taste amazing so um prior to me becoming plant-based I I would play around in the kitchen growing up my mum was never much of a cook she was more of a baker and I think we've gone opposite ways because baking and I we don't really agree I'm I'm really good at the savory foods and the quick and easy type of foods, but baking, I don't know, I've, I've never really been into it. And I tend to burn myself every time I turn the oven on, so I stay away from it. But um, yeah, I used to play around. Basically, when I, I went to university and um, I met a girl there, she was Fiji Indian, and she introduced me to flavor. My mum cooked very plain food when I was growing up. So when this girl started to teach me how to make curries and all these flavours, like, oh, wow, what is this? This is amazing. So I think that's where the whole herbs and spices and using those in my cooking really became part of my way of cooking too. So that's where it all began. I'm actually going to make a quick pumpkin cheesy sauce to go with this dish to pour over the top so what I actually like to do again this is something I, I teach in my meal prep course is I cook my whole pumpkin in a tray so this is I don't know how many inches maybe four inches high and I just put some non-stick baking paper underneath and I just cook the whole pumpkin I wash it off and I put it in and then you don't have to spend hours chopping and getting really frustrated and hurting your hands so I bake the whole pumpkin and then I leave it in the fridge and you can use it in smoothies. You can make it, use it to make sauces or chop it up and then use it in salads as well. So it's really easy. And it has this liquid. I don't know if you can see the liquid that's cooling, but when you cook the pumpkin whole and then let it sit there afterwards, this liquid comes out. It's some magic liquid. I don't know if it's from the pumpkin seeds or from the skin, but I keep that liquid and then I use it instead of oil. It's actually a little bit sticky, so it's a really good substitute for oil in salad dressings and that type of thing. So I don't throw it away, I use it in my dressings. So just a couple of little tips there to, to try out. If somebody had canned pumpkin, would they be able to use it? Yes. We don't really get it here in Australia, unless you go to a specialty health store and then um, yeah, ask for it. Yeah, it's pretty much impossible to get. So. Oh, that's so interesting. Tammy says, OMG, I'm so like her. I've never liked baking because it was so exact and took too long. I like the quick and easy dishes. So you'll probably like her dinner in 15 minute cookbook then. Yeah. Yay, Tammy. Love it. <laughs> uh, Leslie wants to know uh, how, how long and at what temperature did you cook the pumpkin? Um, one, I used to, I pretty much keep my oven on one setting and my air fryer as well. 180, which I think is about 360 to 380 Fahrenheit. I'll look and at that. Hey Siri, what is 180 degrees in Fahrenheit? The answer is 356 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm so lazy I can't even type. Now that I have Siri and Alexa, I just I don't even I just ask them everything. You know, it's so that. funny. I asked Alexa who I was and she knew. Oh, I mean, wow. I mean not I mean that is her owner. I said who's Chef AJ and Alexa actually knew it was so exciting Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. that's awesome um yeah so i'll cook it it depends on the size of the pumpkin too so some of them might take maybe an hour and 15 minutes but another one might take two hours so i just let it sit and then every now and then i'll poke it with a skewer just to check if it's cooked or not so have you ever had kabocha squash can you get that in australia because that's also very delicious what the it, it sort of looks like what you showed me, except it's green <laughs> on the outside and it's more, a little bit more round. Mm, possibly. It's just, it's okay. very delicious. Um, Mary says she has the Meals in 15 Minutes cookbooks and she loves it. And Linda Middlesworth wants to know if you know Philip Woolen. I do know Philip Woolen. I've met him a couple of times. He's an amazing man. Um, yeah, I think I met him in Melbourne one time when I went to Melbourne. So... Um, I met him and Spud Pit at the same event. So, yeah, That's very, 
very amazing man. Oh, it, sorry. I, the reason I said woolen instead of woolen is because Linda typed it woolen the first time. So <laughs> I only I only read what what is written. Do you have any koala bears as pets? <laughs> <laughs> But where I live, I've just actually moved into an area. Um, it's a community on a golf course. And I've got lots of trees in front of me and a little pond. And I get the kangaroos coming through. So that's really awesome. That I really is love so that. cute. I wish I wish I could see kangaroos and <laughs> bears. I, not in captivity, of course. But they're, I, they're, they're so cute. <laughs> um, so what I've put in here is just a wedge of pumpkin again I'm not measuring and I've kept the seeds because essentially it's like buying pumpkin seeds so I may as well just use them it's the whole food I'm just putting it in there and I'm adding in a few oats oats are great for thickening sauces so I'll put those in but again if you had a, a cooked potato put the potato in the starch from that is going to thicken it up too so completely up to you I'm going to add I've got I think this is soy milk but Sometimes I use almond milk as well. Put the whole lot in. It'll be a runnier, more runny sauce. Okay, I'm going to add lemon as well. I find adding the lemon or even a little bit of vinegar to the milk, it's like making a buttermilk. So mm -hmm. it makes it nice and creamy. And using lemon as well, it, um, you're going to get the vitamin C, which helps you absorb your iron better as well. So. It's great to add that into. So I'm just rolling this because it releases the juices. And yeah, it makes it soft. And then you're going to get much more juice out of there than if you did it. Just and, I, and lemon also can help when you're missing salt. It makes things seem like it's salty even when yeah, it's Yeah, again, yeah, engaging that other part of your palate. Leslie wants to know how long would the pumpkin last in the fridge once it's cooked? Um, I usually have mine in there for a good week, week and a half. If I don't use it up, I usually just, I take, if it's organic, I will leave the skin on and just chop it into wedges and put it into the freezer. And then I use it straight from the freezer. If I'm making a smoothie, for example, I'll use it instead of banana. I just find bananas quite heavy. And um, if I eat too much banana, I will start to put weight on again. So I try not to have too much of it. And yeah, having pumpkin, it's so nutrient dense and, and low in calories. I just love using it. So it's great in smoothies or sauces and you can just keep it in the freezer or even what cut it. Is, your pumpkin almost seems a little yellow to me. Here, they're always very kind of orange, like the color of an orange. Ah, okay. Um, I guess maybe it's more like a squash. You could use squash as well or sweet potato, whatever you have on hand, don't, yeah. It, oh, that's much quieter with that, <laughs> with that off. Um, all right, I've just added a garlic clove and I had some of these sun-dried tomatoes, tomatoes, and I'll just add a few of those in as well. So there's no rules, just put whatever you like the taste of and keep playing, play in the kitchen. All right. We'll just give this a whiz up. Okay. Yeah, see, I, I'm definitely not a chef because I keep cleaning as I go and I've, <laughs> I've cooked with chefs before and the whole kitchen's just loaded with things and it doesn't phase them. Whereas I like to just see a few things and cook with those things. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not a chef. <laughs> okay, I'll just blast this for a moment. So block your ears while I run this and I'll go and get the um, I'll go and get the air fryer over as well. torture everyone with their poor ears. It looks pretty. <laughs> oh, it's definitely hot. So you can see it's all cooked up. It's gone crispy on top. Oh and it looks beautiful. It does. The beans and the tomatoes, tomatoes have gone nice and thick like baked beans. 
So that's just 15 minutes in the air fryer. And like I said, I, I like to just put things in there and then walk away and I go and have my shower and I come back and I've got the gourmet breakfast ready to go. <laughs> Easy. And then the sauce. So you can see this is a nice cheesy sauce. If, it, if you want it runny out, just add a little bit more plant milk or some broth. And this is great with pasta as well. So you could have a little bit on your breakfast and then you've got dinner. Mix it with some vegetables, etc., for your dinner. And then you're done. It's easy. I bet it would be good on potatoes or cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah, anything, anything. Leslie says, thank you for asking the questions about pumpkin. I'm a fellow Aussie, so don't use canned pumpkin, but I know the pumpkin is going to be an absolute game changer for me. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, definitely cooking it whole. And like I said, just keep it in the freezer and you can just pull it out and use it. Even if you wanted to cut it into wedges or into little cubes and then put it in the freezer and then you can just thaw it out in the morning and put it into soups or into stir fries and it's, it's ready to go. Easy. So that's it. Yum. Ready. It's making me hungry smelling it all. <laughs> you can eat it if you want. You know, Dylan, who I interviewed last week, he always eats on the air. That's the <laughs> thing, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a bit hot at the moment, but yes, I've, I've already tasted the sauce. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Well, guys, make sure you hop on over to cookingwithplants.com slash Chef AJ for the generous gift of the free oil-free masterclass. And also just go to cookingwithplants.com in general and check out all of her wonderful books. I didn't even know about the 15-minute one. That sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that actually came about, it's a bit of an interesting story. So a few years back, I... Um, I went through divorce and actually I hit menopause early as well. So I went through a lot of change about four years ago now. And so one of the things I went through a time, I, basically I moved out. I lived on my own for the first time since I was, well, since forever. Because after I finished school, I went to university. I lived on campus there. So I always had people around. And then I pretty much moved in with my ex-husband shortly after that and then we were together for 23 years so I ended up I moved out and I was on my own and I went through quite a hard stage of anxiety depression stress um, obviously the hormones were going a bit crazy as well because of menopause and I didn't know what was happening I, I thought I was going crazy and then discovered it was menopause so I really um pulled in the reins on the diet and really went back to whole food plant-based no oil no salt no sugar and really kept it really really plain and all the symptoms started to reverse themselves but one of the things that I did to get myself out of bed get myself doing things each day was this technique this 15 minute technique where I would just set the um, timer on my phone for 15 minutes and I thought right I'm going to go and do the washing I'm going to unpack the dishwasher, whatever it was, just getting, getting out of bed and doing those simple things. And once I started doing something for 15 minutes, I, I was then up, I was doing things and thought, oh, I'll do another 15 minutes. So it really got me out of that, that rut of depression and anxiety and I started to do things. And then that was sort of the premise and the base of this cookbook as well, the 15 minute concept. If you're struggling to fit in healthy eating or finding the time to cook healthy, then I thought, okay, well, 15 minutes, that's all it takes. So that's where the concept of this came about. And it's amazing what a change 15 minutes can do. Just applying 15 minutes at a time, it's amazing. That's great. Well, Dr. Doug Lyle recently spoke in Australia with Dr. Jen Hawk. Was that anywhere near you? Did you happen to go to that? I didn't go to it. It was probably in Melbourne as well. A lot of the events tend to be in Melbourne. It seems to be a bit of a hub for the vegans in Australia, Melbourne and Sydney. Um, the Gold Coast, we have a lot of restaurants and yeah, the community up here is growing, but it's definitely more in the bigger cities like Melbourne and Sydney. 
how many vegans do you know in Australia? Do you have like a meetup or anything like that if people wanted to get, get together with you? Because you do have a few people watching from Australia. And one of them actually asks, uh, she goes, um, I, Leslie says, do you prefer the sweeter Kent JAP pumpkin or the Queensland blue? And was the pumpkin orange before it was baked? <laughs> um. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know my pumpkins that well. I just go to the shop and get whatever, um, or I'll get squash. I think it's the Queensland one. It's green on the outside when before you bake it, and it's orangey yellow on the inside. So I don't. I don't actually know the name of it. It sounds a lot like the kabocha squash to me. But either way, it's delicious. All yeah. squashes are delicious. That was so interesting, though, that you said that when you eat bananas, you can gain weight. I've never heard people gaining weight from fruit. How many bananas were you eating? But but you're right. Squash is lower in caloric density than bananas. Bananas are about 400 calories a pound. Squash is about 200 calories a pound. Yeah. Um, no, I was well. I must be eating too many. But I know, especially when I first started eating this way, I I logged everything I was eating to keep a track of how things were affecting my body. And every time I added banana, boom, my weight would go up. Why? What? And um, like how much though? So, because like, are you familiar with like? Yeah, I mean, because like weight doesn't mean that you gain fat. You know, there's glycogen. Yeah. There's yeah, water. yeah. yeah. Oh, I would even try it over several days or for the week I would eat bananas and then I'd cut them out and I'd have berries instead and then that would work. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know that and oats and yeah, it must just be the quantities maybe or what, yeah, the other things that I'm eating. But definitely I know how to tweak it and, and eat the more um, nutrient dense foods with lower calories. So if I use the berries etc i just find they work better for my body i think that's great that you know what works for you i was just curious because i you know yeah, yeah. talking to people about their weight that's what i do all day <laughs> we have someone from mount gam mount gambler or mount yeah, Gambier, yeah. australia named allison watching oh her last name is cook what a fun last name wow. very good. Uh, sherry says that she loves the interview and she loves your one meal all in one dish with the air fryer thanks for sharing yeah i love the idea that you're eating from the like i mean i wish that we could just be everything would be one bowl you know you yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah well a lot of the meals I create um are just in one pot I just throw it all in and I'm ready to go but yeah I know a lot of people they like to have things separate on their plates as well so um yeah but just stick oh with my the god food. a lot of times I just eat off the air fryer I don't even bother <laughs> getting the plate you know I'm just too lazy I figure one less thing to wash yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that is great. Do you guys have any more questions for Anya? What's next for you? What's next for me? Well, I'm actually, this is hot off the press. I'm actually creating these air fryer dishes because I want to do either an air fryer masterclass or a mini course that I want to want to release soon. Just to teach people that there's so many different things that you can make in the air fryer. You can bake in there, you can make mini quiches, you can do your tofu scramble, you can do your breakfast, you can cook your vegetables. There's just so many things you can make in there. So I really want to share some creative ideas that I have with the air fryer and maybe do a special masterclass on that or um, like I said, maybe a mini course. So that that's something I'm toying around with at the moment. That sounds great. I have a surprise for you, but I'm just trying to verify through text. You're going to be very happy in a minute. I like to tell you is I just got a text from one of the viewers and I'm going to be making you very happy. Well, I'm not going to be making you very happy. You're going to be made very happy. So don't leave. I have a surprise. Uh, Bernard says, I want to make hummus without tahini. Well, you can do that. There's a recipe in my first book. You don't have to have tahini. Do you make uh, your hummus without tahini? Um, I, I sometimes put in a little bit um but you can definitely make it without it just leave it out it still pretty much tastes the same um if you wanted to add a little bit more body to it then you could even add a, a piece of the cooked pumpkin or something to it just to add a little bit more texture and flavor but yeah you can definitely make it without tahini you don't need that in there absolutely so if you joined us late uh, uh, anya has given you all a free masterclass. It's something that she charges for and it's oil free and it includes an ebook download. It's cookingwithplants.com slash chef AJ. And Gina says she already downloaded it and she says it looks amazing and to thank you. And 
I want to tell you something very exciting. Uh, at not, don't give your address on the air, but, but uh, I would like you to please email to me because uh, you were so generous to give your class uh, that Thomas Allen and Ethel from California Balsamic who are watching are gonna send you their California Balsamic even though it's all the way to Australia. So they're going to be sending you a sampler. So how do you like that? Now you're finally gonna get to try. Yep. That made my birthday better from last week. <laughs> yeah. Yay. That's exciting because I, I constantly watch all of your videos. Oh, and I sit here and I think, oh, and I keep walking into all the shops and I'm looking longingly. It's like rice vinegar, balsamic vinegar. Well, who knows? And maybe you'll even put one in one of your recipes. Pamela from yeah. New Zealand wants to know California balsamic will ship. So I did an interview with Thomas earlier in the week, Pamela, you can find it on my YouTube page and he will ship pretty much anywhere, but unfortunately you do have to pay the postage, which is gonna be more expensive if outside the United States. He's shipped to even Japan for people. If you're in the United States, it's a flat rate of 9.95, which is great because no matter how much you order. So yes, he'll ship them to you. You'll have to contact him at californiabalsamic.com, but you will uh, have to pay for the shipping. Thank you so much, Thomas. Yay, I really appreciate that. I'm so excited to try it now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Bailey wants to say hello to you. Hi, Bailey. <laughs> hello. Do you have any pets? I'm asking all my speakers this week if they have any pets because I find in, in these stressful times, it's helpful to have, it's always helpful to have pets, but especially during these times. I wish I did know. I, well, like I said, I, well, I'm, I'm renting where I am. So I'm in a townhouse in a, a golf community, golf estate, but I'm so fortunate. I literally, I could walk out on my balcony now I have some bird feed that I throw out and ducks will come over. Different types of bird life will come over and then I'll get the kangaroos coming through as well. So I've got nature right outside my window here. And the other night I was lying in bed and I was reading a book and all of a sudden I hear this woof and I thought, what was that? And my whole balcony was shaking and an owl had flown in and was just sitting there and looking at me and I thought, wow, this is awesome. So I have a variety of animals and nature around me. So. That's terrific. So a oh, wait. Um, Ethel from California Balsamic Vinegar is saying a sampler anywhere in the world is $20 shipping, but that's $20 shipping plus, of course, the sampler, right, Ethel? So uh, they're asking what flavors you'd like. So why doesn't everybody type in their favorite two flavors of California Balsamic? And then we can tell Anya what the uh, consensus is. But of course, she can certainly, certainly choose her own. And I, well, I prefer savory flavors, so I, I'm not sure what sort of... Um, Curry, teriyaki, Gilroy garlic, sweet heat, blazing habanero, dill mustard, cilantro, basil. I think, I, I think those are all the savory flavors. I think I named all eight. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm with you. I like the savory definitely flavors. Definitely teriyaki. And did you say there was an apricot one earlier? There, there is an apricot one. That would be more on the sweet side. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's right. Kathy, I forgot about uh, Kathy posted one of my favorites. I forgot smoked hickory, which tastes like barbecue Ooh, sauce. Yeah, I, do, yeah. I, I do love the savory. So Dax says, many of my family are sensitive to alums, all types of onions. I would love more recipes that cater for that. And, you know, I, I can't help you, unfortunately. I mean, not, not that I can't help you. It, it's difficult because for me doing salt-free cooking, and I just discussed this with Chef Ramses Bravo of True North last week, that really, and when you're not using salt, everything starts with an onion. So that to me, not using an onion is literally the hardest thing you could ask me to do. The only thing I, I could think of that she could use is maybe, can she use leek? Well, that's, that might still be the Allium family, so hopefully she'll answer. So look at all these people are saying they're, they're posting their favorites. Curry and chocolate, curry and lemon, hickory, curry and sweet heat, uh, curry and teriyaki. A lot of curry lovers like me, curry, curry. And sweet heat, raspberry for salads. Uh, so yeah, dill mustard, like, yep, a lot of people love the same flavor. The flavors. curry one would be really good in this too. Oh, my God. Curry. The curry is my number one favorite. It's wow. so good, good. Oh, yeah, she's, uh, uh, sorry, when I say he or she, sometimes I just don't know. Uh, Dax uh, is saying no leek either. So that would probably be no onion, no garlic, no shallot, yeah. no scallion. That is tough. There is a spice that the Hare Krishna people use for religious reasons called asafita or, or hing, which is a dried seasoning that supposedly tastes like onion and garlic, but it is not. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of anything else either. That's so sad. 
Yeah, it is. It's really tough. It's a tough allergy, you know, I think. It's so anyway, uh, I, Jennifer says hello from Wales. Oh, Louise likes lavender. I think that might be the only one I haven't tried. Um, oh. So yeah, astafita is an Indian spice is gold as a replacement for onions. And they often, sometimes it's sold as hing, H-I-N-G in spice stores, especially Indian spice stores is where I've seen it. Yeah. So this has been so fun talking to you and thank you for making such a delicious, quick and easy meal. I love, I'm, I'm going to try the, the, the pumpkin sauce, but I, it's very easy to get canned pumpkin here for 99 cents, you know, at Trader Joe's all year round. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'm jealous of that. Definitely jealous of that. <laughs> right. So guys, head over to cookingwithplants.com. Maybe consider getting a couple of her books. And she was so generous to give you a class if you go to slash chef AJ on that website. Uh, Dax is saying, I have to find hing. I'm using fennel, sometimes carrots. Thanks for the tip. Daughter, uh, Louise's daughter doesn't like onions, so they just omit and she loves all the dishes. See, to me, onions, man, you know, I just, you know what I've been doing that's really interesting? So I'm kind of lazy. And if I can just throw everything in an instant pot, I will. And, and a lot of times I'll see recipes and I've been doing some, like another one of my favorite chef's recipes uh, named Kathy Hester. And a lot of times recipe calls for you to saute the onions first, you know, but it's like ah, too much trouble. So I throw them in. Well, the, uh, the other day I made a recipe. It was one of, one of my own recipes. It was butternut squash uh, bisque. And I put everything in the instant pot and it was done. And I realized I hadn't put the onion in. Well, I didn't want to put raw onion in obviously in a cook soup that wouldn't taste very good so I went to all the trouble of caramelizing the onions of course without oil putting it back in it oh my god it was like even better you know it really did it did make a difference wow yum yep yeah yeah I quite often I don't even bother with the whole sweating the onion before I cook I just throw everything into a pan and then just stir fry and the liquids that release out of things like um, you might put some frozen vegetables in there or have zucchini or vegetables that release water. So it, it cooks everything together anyway. And I, I like the way it creates a little bit of a brothy flavor without having to worry about sauteing the onion to start with. So yeah, I, I'm all for one pot dishes. <laughs> yeah, me too. What I, what I love to do with California balsamic dill mustard vinegar is I marinate onions in them in the refrigerator and they're such, such a great topping for salads. Oh. I'm really excited to play with these vinegars. Yeah, you're going to love them. And that's Thomas and Ethel, we've got to get you distributors in Australia and all these other countries so you can be. Yes, I'll distribute it for you. I'm your official distributor. <laughs> Absolutely. Like we got to have global vinegar domination, you know? <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much for being here, Anya. Thank you everyone for watching. Please come back tomorrow at 1 p.m. when I'll be interviewing Nicholas DeVoren from the local spicery. We want to get you guys the most flavorful seasonings that we can. So again, head over to cookingwithplants.com. And if you go to slash Chef AJ, you'll get your free masterclass. Be sure to follow Anya on social media. How do they sign up to follow you on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, blog? Why don't you tell us how? Um, I am pretty much under Cooking With Plants on YouTube, Instagram, um, Facebook. I've got a Facebook page and a Facebook group. The group is very interactive. So Cooking With Plants group. And on my website also there's a newsletter sign up. So um, yeah, you can sign up to my newsletter and I'll st stay in touch that way. So pretty much cooking with plants and you'll find me anywhere and everywhere. And thank you again for having me on here. It's been so much fun. It's I my pleasure. You're just a delight. And again, if you haven't checked out her nut-free cheese recipe, maybe say the name of it, because that's how I found you and I've made it and I've served it to company. And it's like the easiest, most, I, I, I make it in little molds that are like heart shaped. It's like fantastic. And I make it with crackers that I make in the, in the dehydrator. People love that recipe. It's the nut-free paprika cheese. So yeah, quick and easy to make. And that, that is on my website as well and on YouTube. So yeah, or in the um, vegan made easy cookbook very nice well thank you guys so much and everyone be well stay safe and we'll see you back here tomorrow thanks again Anya thank you AJ see you everyone take care bye